Tron Coons. Here. Emily Leach. Here. Andrea Anderson. She's running late. She will be here. Eric Cavanaugh. I'm here. Okay, let's uh, stand and pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
eighth grade, you can take advanced Spanish, advanced French, or like you could take advanced art. And we got our renovated bathrooms for eighth grade, which is good. <laughs> Very good. I saw them last night. They're so much nicer. Yeah, they really are. Very helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. Well, it was great to hear from you guys. Um, you're certainly welcome to stay, but also welcome to leave and take care of homework and whatever else you might have plenty of tonight. I just like a reminder to the board, our middle school reps will rotate each month. So Stella will rejoin us a couple of times throughout the year, but she has a couple months off before she comes back. We'll have a different representative each month as you go up, go throughout the school year. Fantastic. <laughs>
Denise Messier, former classroom teacher from Dover. Um, she's got um, a lot of knowledge and she has um, some backup from other professionals that our staff have worked with in the past. Um, so we did sort of an introduction, um, got our staff to start thinking about literacy and um, communicating with each other about their own thoughts around literacy. Um, she had the staff um, write her a letter at the end as sort of their exit ticket to um, talk about you know, whatever they wanted to, you know, the three hours that she spent with us, um, anything regarding literacy, um, what their hopes were for the year, um, just to get sort of a flavor of our staff and what direction to take us. So we're looking forward to that. She's going to come to four half professional development days and then six other school days where she can be in the classroom observing and giving feedback, um, having staff discussions about different resources that we should be using. Um, I think you saw later in my report that we have made a decision to purchase a resource for grades K through four to be more consistent with uh, phonics instruction. Um, so we've already started some of the things, um, now it's just putting um, some different practices in place and um, monitoring and she's even willing to come in and um, do some um, teaching herself and having our teachers watch um, you know, to give them an idea of different strategies to use. So should be fun. And then the second morning, um, Mrs. O'Connor was able to secure McGregor EMS from Durham, New Hampshire. They try to get here on a yearly basis to keep our staff fully certified in first aid and CPR. Um, we're split in half, so one year we get first aid training, the next year CPR training, and you know the next year we flip. So it's, it's a nice thing that all of our staff get that and not just a few people here and there. Um, there are requirements for field trips and special events with students they have CPR certified personnel so we can definitely cover that. The other professional development thing that's not in there, um, I'll be taking a group of four teachers and myself to the National Council of Teachers on Mathematics National Convention in a couple of weeks. It's going to be held in Boston this year. Um, we had an opportunity to go to a regional conference last year in Connecticut, but we decided not to, knowing that it was coming to Boston, and instead of it just being regional, it's a national conference. Um, our math consultant, Tracy Zager, is one of the presenters, um, so we'll get to you know, touch base with her again, and you know, not to mention other presenters from around the world. So it'll be a great opportunity. We selected um, a kindergarten teacher, a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, sixth, so we have people spread throughout the building. And um, on the second page, just uh, to touch base on the Marshwood transition, um, our new student services direct director, Nancy, um, our new RGS liaison, Elizabeth and myself, went over and had a meeting with their new student services director, their special ed secretary, and their principal um, prior to school starting. Um, we just wanted to make sure, because of new personnel, that we all got on the same page, what the procedures were, good time to introduce each other rather than at our first meeting for a student. Um, and the principal was just raving about you know, how much he appreciated us you know, reaching out to them and saying this is important for us to do. So um, I put it under the transition because you know that's part of the transition, our special ed kids yeah. going over there. So. And Elizabeth has hit the ground running, and she's had a couple of meetings at the middle school and high school. Been in contact with Nancy at the SAU for a few kids too. So. If I can just jump in for a second, I, I failed to uh, mention this pretty much before, but I wanted to introduce Nancy Michaud, our new director of student services. She's been working with us for a while now and hit the ground and running, and, and is doing a fantastic job. But uh, I apologize for not introducing her during my report, so you can put a face with a name then. Thanks for coming tonight. Then two other things I just wanted to touch on. Um, <coughs> Mrs. O'Connor um, just whispered in my ear that we have 46 students signed up for the clinic this year so far. <coughs> equals, just about equals the number we had last year. We still have about four weeks before it happens, three or four weeks. So we've got a lot of families really taking advantage um, of this service. 
And then open house was Tuesday night. Uh, we had a full house as usual. Um, a lot of people appreciative of the physical changes in the building, but also um, just positive interactions with staff members and um, you know, overall a general good feeling about coming back to school this year. Um, our new staff fit in really well.
if we're not changing the spirit of the contract or the length of the contract if the state board would again have to approve this because this this contract has already been approved so I, I so after you finish after the board is comfortable with the final draft I will bring it to our attorney and have that answer
So at this point, if, if the board could, again, take some time and, and look through the document. If you have any questions, let me know uh, prior to the next meeting, and I will try to put all of them together so we can have an inclusive discussion, and, and I'll put it on for action next time. Great. Sounds good. So we can email you. Yep. Yep. Okay, it looks like next up is the Grade 6 Informational Forum discussion. There was a, at the last meeting we had started the discussion about holding a, a setting a date to hold the informational discussion on 6th grade uh, here at, at uh, Rollinsburg Grade School. Um, so I just put that on for discussion and to see if you wanted to set a date for that forum. I think it would be good to set a date because originally we were talking about October, which is coming right up. Um, does it make sense to do it sort of on a weeknight? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Or what are other people think? Yeah. Yes. Great. It's probably better than a Saturday. Um,
Yes, yeah, through the tax, yeah, through the tax rate setting it will be, yes. Yeah, but they take care of all of that, and that's expensive. We also need to our taxes, you know, the last time, the payment rate of the tenants and how they do it, and that would be just the deadline, too, I believe. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, so, it's a, it's a nice And then the second update is for this current year, 1920. Um, it's really, it's really early to, you know, have an idea of where we stand. We're still encumbering payroll and purchase orders for the year. I anticipate that next month we'll have a better understanding of where we're at. Just, you know, preliminarily, I, you know, Rich and I had talked, and we are going to have some savings and salaries, some maintenance items that, you know, we had done at the end of last year, so it'll free up for this year. And then I did get an estimate from Marshwood. I haven't gotten the first invoice yet, but the um, the enrollment has dropped there. There's some students that have left since we budgeted, so I'm anticipating some savings there as well. But I hesitant to say that until I receive the first the first invoice. So um, hopefully by the next month's report, those will be in and encumbered and everything. And then I know Bob updated you last month on the revenue, but we um, are going to see a shortfall for the special education aid. We had no students qualify. So that will also get adjusted during tax rate setting. They just automatically do that. So we may have other areas where we might have more. So it could offset each other. But I just wanted to remind the board of that. And like Judy said, the payment schedule was attached for the town. That's just an estimate until the tax rate's set, and then I'll adjust it once that's done. Any questions on that one? Excellent. Thank you, Kate. So we're up to new business, which... Uh, I, have, I have one quick question of Katie, and it's an exception to the role, but I just wanted to say, it's out. And Robert noted that we still had one of the summer's work to do, and I just wanted to make sure that that was actually accurate. I, 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 I was not anticipating that for the coming year, for this year. Yeah, if you remember when we budgeted, we do have still one student. It's not, they're not there full time. They're still there a portion of the time. Um, but we consider it as one because it is one student, okay. even though they are there full time. Yeah. Okay, so we had several uh, new policies for a first reading this time. Um, Anyone see anything of concern or have any comments about those? The first reading uh, list of policies. I have some record retention question mm -hmm. slash correction. Um, it's great that we have this and to it as well. Um, after looking at the secure, new security cameras outside, um, I think that we need to include something about how long we retain the video footage from those. Um, I don't know what the kind of best practice is for that, but there's nothing about, um, about that in the retention uh, records or in the schedule. So like us to add something about that. That's a good point. Um, and then in the record retention schedule, just a correction, HIPAA is two A's, one P. I wrote that down too. It's not a HIPAA. That's a big <laughs> to say. That's a big privacy joke right there. Yep. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> HIP. It's wrong in it's wrong in a few places. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll look into that. 
for that. My first thought is, uh, I, I'm thinking, does that go into your records retention or does it go into, the, there's a policy on videotaping, on, on surveillance. So I'll, I'll check into that and find out where it should go. Great. Anything else? Go ahead, Judy. Yeah, I have a question on the uh, wellness policy, the JLCF. Um, and I, I just wondered, Bob, if you could give us any background on what it looks like it's a brand new policy, and just if you could give us some background on, 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 on why that might come from. Why? I actually think it's a great idea. But, so, uh, but it looks brand new, and so this, um, when we adopt it, should be adopted, um, it's like, when does it all start? Like, when does it start? When does it start? Yeah. Well, I'll start off, and then I'm going to hand it off to Katie because she's got more information as well. Part of this came from the food service audit. Uh, we had a food service audit in uh, Summersworth, and there were a number of things that were highlighted, one being the wellness policy and some of the things in it uh, that were mandated. So we, we carried those over. Do you have more information than yeah, that? Yeah, I think you had a wellness policy, but th this one was all redone because there's a checklist that the food service uh, at the state provides to us, and our policy did not meet all the requirements of that checklist. So um, there was a website that they gave us, a Food Alliance, or I can't remember the exact website, that for schools to follow a sample policy. So that's what we took and kind of made it our own. But this meets all the requirements of that checklist to pass the food service audit. And it was an audit for both districts. They just happened to pick one school in the district to visit. It happened to be in Summersworth this year, but they come every three years to do it, so. Okay, and, and I know it's been uh, reviewed by the New Hampshire Department of Education. How about um, um, uh, the New Hampshire School Board Association? I believe they have a different policy, and when I sent it to the food service people, it did not meet the checklist that the state of New Hampshire requires. Okay, so it sounds like something Theirs did not meet all the requirements, so. Okay. And so my, my last question then was, so, so um, when we have the, uh, like, form, is there, is there a committee? I know there's at least one committee that has to be formed that includes the age school board members. Yep. Um, so I just, does that have to get, is it be adopted? Is that when the committee gets formed and those kinds of things? Yeah, I would assume so.
funding this year, but there is the 
5K. The pump ring, the down here is called the pump ring, so I like that. Okay. Well, Tom's running, so it's going to be Tom's super fun. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Emily Leach, yes. Andrea Anderson, yes. Aaron Cavanaugh, yes. 